This video is not for the NX uninitiated. Uh, if you don't really know what NX is at all yet, I would recommend checking out my other video first and then coming back to this one. Once you start getting into NX, you will probably come across this idea of putting everything into libraries. And the app itself just becomes this super lightweight shell. An absolutely fantastic example of this is the Angular Spotify repo that Trung Vo created along with some contributions from others. So I'll link to that in the description and you really should just absorb as much of that code into your brain as you can. And I'd also like to give a huge shout out to Chow, that's at N-A-R-T-C 1410 on Twitter, whose content has helped solidify a lot of these concepts for me. So if you're new to this style of code organization, it's totally weird. It's hard to even piece together a mental model of how it all works or how you would do something similar in your own apps. So I thought it would be useful to walk through refactoring a basic bare bones Ionic and Angular application into this highly optimized NX library structure. I'm going to fly through this without spending too much time on the details, but I intend to create a much larger article covering concepts in depth. So make sure to check that out in the description for more details. Okay, let's jump into it. We're gonna start out by creating a new NX workspace just with the MPX create NX workspace command. And I'm just going to call this workspace NX Ionic. And I'm going to just create an empty NX workspace. And once that's installed, I'm going to change into that directory and install the NX Stend Ionic Angular plugin. And what this is going to do is allow us to just generate an Ionic application in the NX workspace. And once that plugin is installed, we can generate an Ionic Angular application with NX Generate, NX Stend Ionic Angular application and we're calling it NX Ionic Mobile. And we will just go with the blank starter template. Okay, so that's all done now. Let's open this up in VS Code and take a look. Okay, so we are creating an app called NX Ionic Mobile, which will contain the mobile version of our app. Now we aren't doing this right now, but we might also later want to create a web specific version of this app. And since we will be building all of the components and services for our application into libraries, we will easily be able to share code between both of the applications. And if we're going with the full maxed out and optimized NX approach, we pretty much want everything to be in libraries. The apps themselves will just be a simple shell or container that pulls in stuff from the libraries. So this can be a hard paradigm shift to come to terms with in NX. You don't have to do it this way, but it probably is the best way to do it in order to fully utilize NX. And hopefully it will make more sense as we go. So we have a basic Ionic application generated inside of our NX workspace. And this is just a simple blank application, but even with just this basic setup, we already have too much code in our application that should be in libraries specifically this home feature that we have, the home page, and also some of the general app configuration as well could be in libraries. So let's refactor everything we need out into libraries and we're just gonna do this a little bit at a time. And we're going to start with our home component. So we will first create a folder inside of the libs folder and we are going to call this mobile. When creating libraries with NX, it's important to understand that we can just create normal folders to help organize the scope of our library folders. We call these grouping folders. So they don't do anything special. They just group things together like a normal folder does. But as well as these grouping folders, as you'll see in a moment, we also generate libraries. So these will also be in their own folders, but they are generated by NX and allow us to share and publish the contents of the folder. For example, a component that we might want to use in one or more apps in our workspace, or maybe we even want to publish it to NPM. So we have our mobile folder, a grouping folder, and we are going to use that to contain all of the libraries for our mobile app. So later we might move some libraries out of this folder into a shared folder. So that would be at libs forward slash shared so that it can be used by multiple different apps. But for now, we just have the one application and everything is just going to live 
inside of this one mobile folder. And just a bit of a side note here, I think this structure is worthwhile even if you are just building a single application in this workspace. So now we're going to create another folder inside of mobile for our homepage. So we are going to call this one home and again it's just a normal folder. And now it's time to actually generate a library. So if we are adhering to NX best practices, there are four different types of libraries we might create. These are feature, UI, data access, and utility. But keep in mind that this is just a naming convention, a way to sort of separate the roles of different types of libraries. There isn't anything special about these different libraries. A feature library would hold smart components, for example, components with business logic and injected services. A UI library would hold dumb components uh, that are mostly presentational. A data access library would hold things like our services for accessing data or NGRX files and things like that. And a utility library would hold things like helper functions. So the home page component that we are refactoring into this library would be considered a smart component. So we will create a feature library. Now at the moment it is actually just a simple presentational component because it doesn't do anything yet, but we do intend to add smart features to it. So we could do this through the command line, but I like to use the NX console extension to make running NX commands a bit easier because they can be a bit long and confusing. And this is just going to provide a GUI for us to uh, interact with those commands. Now we just created a blank NX workspace. So in order to use the Angular library generators and other things, we will need to install the Narwhal Angular package. And we can just do that with npm install Narwhal Angular. And now we can open the NX console extension, go to generate, and we'll just type in library and choose to create an Angular library. And we're going to give this a name of feature because it will be holding our home component, which will be a smart component. And it's worth noting that there are different ways to go about structuring this. If we wanted to have multiple child components for this feature, instead of just the home page itself, we might instead create a feature folder as a grouping folder and then generate multiple libraries within that to hold each smart component. But in this case, we just have the one component. So we're just gonna call the library itself feature. And the directory is going to be mobile forward slash home. And we'll just leave the defaults for the rest. So before running this command, you can check the dry run down here to make sure everything looks okay. And it looks like everything is going to be created in the right spot. Our library is going to be at libs forward slash mobile forward slash home forward slash feature. So let's run that now. And now we have our first feature library. So there is a lot of NX stuff going on here to set this up, but the key thing we are interested in is what is inside of the lib folder. So this can get a bit confusing, but we basically have libs, forward slash mobile, home, feature, and then the generated library, which contains a source folder, and inside of that, a lib folder, and that is where our functionality will live. And in this case, we just have a basic Angular module that has been generated for us. So what we're going to do is delete this and we're going to pull over the files from our home component into that library. So I'm going to grab all of these and I'm just going to drop them inside of that lib folder. I'm going to delete the old module here. I can also delete the home folder now from the app. And if we open up our home page component here, we'll get some linting errors complaining at us because it doesn't end with the name component. So let's just fix that up. We'll add component to the end and we'll make sure to update all of these other files as well. So we'll save that one and check in the module as well and replace all these with homepage component. This isn't really important. I'm just doing this just to get rid of the linting error. And we will also need to make sure to update this index.ts file because this is where the library uh, exports everything from. And you can see here, it's still linking to the old module name. So we'll just update this to be home.module. So that wasn't so bad, but as you might guess, this is going to break our app because we just deleted this entire component from our app. So now we need to use this feature library in our app. So if we go to our apps 
app routing file, we will see that it's trying to pull in this module from a file that no longer exists. So we need to link this to pull in from our library instead. So if you go to the tsconfig.base.json file in your project, you can see that there are paths set up to link to the libraries that you create. So in this case, we can use NX Ionic mobile home feature to link to that module file. So I'm just going to copy that path over and we are going to replace this path with our new import path. And we also need to change that from homepage module to homepage component module. Okay, so that's our first little uh, refactor done. So let's just run NX serve mobile and let's see if our application still works. I'll actually have to run NX serve NX Ionic mobile because that's what the name of the app is. Okay, cool. Everything is loading as normal. And as far as you could see in the application, nothing has changed. So our app is already pretty bare bones now. The one actual feature we had in the app, we have now refactored into a library. However, it is also a common pattern to also create a library for your application shell, which will hold things like the applications, routes, and the root level imports for your app. So things like the Ionic storage module or NGRX modules like store and effects, uh, the router module and so on. Basically most of the things that you would put in your app.module.ts file. So let's do that now. So first we're going to create a, another grouping folder in the mobile shell directory. So now we have a home folder and a shell folder under our mobile library here. And within this shell, we're going to create another feature library just like we did for the home page. So again, we'll open up the NX console extension, go to generate, we're gonna generate another library. And again, we're going to call this one feature as well. And it's going to be in the mobile forward slash shell directory. And we'll make sure to run that one. And now we should be able to check out our new generated library at libs mobile shell, open up that source folder lib, and then we can see our new module file created here. Now by default, this is going to use a full path name for the name. I think this is a bit long, so I'm just gonna rename this to mobile shell module. And I'll update that name as well. And we also need to make sure that index.ts is updated appropriately, and it has been. So now we are going to pull over everything we need from our existing app.module.ts file. But we won't be pulling everything over because we will still have a root module file for the app there's just not going to be as much stuff in it. So first I'm just going to move this routing module into our shell and, and I'm also going to update this name to mobile shell routing.module.ts. And this is the part where everything's gonna start breaking. So we'll just ignore that until it all starts working again. And we will also need to make sure we update the name in this file as well from app routing module to mobile shell routing module. And I'll just expand this back out so we can see a bit more of the code. And within this routing file, we're already using this library path here. So there's nothing else to update. And so next I'm going to copy over everything in this module file here. And I'm just going to dump it down the bottom here. And I'm just gonna pull out the things that I want to be in this module. And the final file is going to look like this. So this is what we're keeping in our shell here and this is what we'll be moving back to that app.module.ts file. So we've basically moved everything that was in the app module file out into this uh, shell module. The only things we have kept are the the root component that is being declared and bootstrapped and we're also keeping the ionic module in the app's root module as well because this app component uses ionic components. So we're going to pull all of this out of here now save this file, go back to our apps root module file, and we are going to dump what is left back into that file. So in this case, we've moved most of what was in here out into that shell module file, but it won't always look exactly like this. I guess the general idea is that we wanna just keep this as lightweight as possible, but what exactly this looks like might change from app to app. So the final thing we need to do here is to import our shell module that we just created back into our app's root module. 
So our final module file will look like this. And again, if you're not sure what the path is to a particular library, you can always just look that up in tsconfig.base.json. You'll be able to see everything listed there. And then we're just supplying this module as an import to our root module. And it looks like we are getting an error here. So this is coming from our index.ts file and we will try serving that again. Actually, it still doesn't work. And I think it's literally because I forgot to save this file. So that works now. And we have a different error coming up now. It's complaining about not knowing what the ion router outlet component is. And that's because I forgot to include the ionic module here. And I'll also just double check in the mobile shell module that I did remove the ionic module from there. So that's good. And hopefully this time it does work. We compiled successfully. And let's just take a quick look at the app. And we can see that the app is also working. So we've now moved our sort of basic structure for our app into these libraries. And from this point on, our application here will just remain a simple shell. Almost nothing will ever need to be added to the actual app here with a few exceptions. Most of our development work will take place by adding new libraries and we can incorporate those features into the app by updating uh, the shell with new routes and so on. So you can imagine we might create another page, for example, maybe we create a, a to-do page or a feature or whatever. So we create that as a library. We come into our shell here, open up the routing module, and then we set up another path that links to that other library. So let me know if you liked this video. If there is any interest, I'll make a follow-up to this video where we start adding some more features into the app by creating additional libraries. And as always, if you did like the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.